Hello YouTube, sorry if I'm not too upbeat at the moment, but I've, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, having an accident. But what's made me do this now, it's because I've had probably my first proper accident as a heavy goods driver after five years of driving. I'll quickly go through what happened vaguely as best I can without sharing any personal information or anything like that of of whoever. If you can see anything then, but yeah, I'll edit that out if needs be. Pardon me. Yeah, I was on the M4 just outside Reading, heading northbound, sort of heading up towards sort of Bristol. I was going to park up in a few services time originally, and I pulled out for the junction, it was junction 11 I think it was, so I checked obviously while I was assessing where things were and that, after the accident, and uh, I pulled out to allow the vehicles coming on to get on, they all got on and dispersed, I say that a little bit after, pulled about a few hundred yards down, so I checked my mirrors, so I was in lane two, check the mirrors, check as best you can, it's dark as well like now, I also had my lights on and all that. And I didn't see this, but what what was there was a car in my front left blind spot, literally in that corner behind the mirrors. I mean if I knew they were there, I would see them in the curvex, because you'd be like, yeah. And just see him possibly that's my only assessment of after but I honestly just didn't see them I didn't even check twice so I checked mirrors indicated rechecked obviously done a full check around again rechecked the mirrors all clear start to move over then just felt that so I then immediately started reducing speed because I was like oh I've hit something and stop I think the bike then I saw the car come swerve around in front of me and I pushed them sideways down the road a little bit, then they spurted off onto the hard shoulder. Which at this point I had stopped. We were lucky we were going really slow at the time anyway. So if it was on full on speed, it might have been a bit more interesting. Lucky no one's been hurt and that it's just I think both parties were in shock. The car that I hit was a young couple. You know. Fairly young, I think, I think lady driver only been driving for about a year or so anyway, what I've been told. And that's as far as I'll go with personal information, just for judgement, but you know. Police got involved naturally, being on, on the M4, being breathalysed, naturally. What am I? Breathalyzer! First time I've been breathalysed as well. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, it is what it is. Key things is what I was I done, even though I was suffering from shock at the time. Maybe I should go and see how they were first, but I immediately naturally sort of thought, let the office know quickly. So that quickly let you know I've been involved in an accident on the M4. I'm about to go and check what the score is, you know, if there's any casualties, you know. I was very fortunate that the other parties because I was expecting to get a whole abuse at me I was expecting that to be honest no you know I was really questioning could I have done something you know with hindsight you know if he knew whether they were there I wouldn't have pulled in you know I honestly just didn't see him now, I've been sat here going, what can I do to make that blind spot a bit better? It's not much, really. Because the problem is, if you move that forward, you're then increasing your blind spot beside you a bit more, and oh, you can't win. But, you know, it's probably a freak accident. You know, it's just that 1%, they just were unlucky in the wrong spot. But the other thing is, they must have undertook me. Because they weren't ahead of me. Because I didn't see them at all ahead of me. The other thing I'm kicking myself with is I've just gone on to my dash cam. I have footage up to when I got to London. But since I departed London on the route here, I had no footage. 
The only footage I had was while we started the truck up, so I think the dash cam must have froze. I didn't realise it had. I didn't overly, overly glance at it, to be honest. But never mind. You know, so I have to let the boss know, because I did say to the boss, yeah, I've got dash cam, I'll get the footage off. Got here and went, oh. So I'll send them all the pictures, a copy of the paper I filled out with a sketch. Yeah, so make sure you exchange details. That's the key one. But the key first thing to find out, safety. Get off, because we all got on hard shoulder as soon as I waved them. I'm going on the hard shoulder. At first they thought I was motoring off. They're about to, like, like <laughs> looking up at me. As I remember when the car came around, I saw her face, like, you know, obviously she was in full-on shock. You know, they probably didn't fully understand what happened to it hit him. But hopefully it might be a lesson learned. You don't undertake a truck and you don't sit beside the truck. You know, people don't think and, you know, but, now I've been assessing how did I miss him? It's a constant going round and round in my head and I'm just trying to calm myself down, to be honest. So I've gone in, I've had something to eat and all that. And I'm more chill than I was, but still, I'm like going, how did they end up there? Where did... Because I'm certain they weren't up ahead, because otherwise I would have clocked them and I wouldn't have pulled in on them. The only thing I can see what may have happened, they've come up on the inside. Obviously my attention's probably been frontal and maybe on onto my whites, making sure... And it only takes a few seconds for a car to come up on your left. Then for you to suddenly go, I need to pull over now. There's nothing there. Indicate. No, still nothing there. Whoop. Yeah. Also, I'm still happy. I'm still going to drive. It hasn't put me off being a truck driver. Don't worry. Don't panic. I'm not going to make a scene about this like some other YouTubers would do. You know, I will title this as I've had an accident. And maybe what to do in accident. And my tips are in accident. I think I've done pretty well there. I said safety first. Your safety, then others. So get yourself on the hard shoulder if you're on the motorway. Or to a safe spot as best you can. Depend on the road you're on. And depend on how serious the accident is. You know? So if you're um, demobilised. Which this lucky or not. The damage on this is minimal. The only thing I'm missing is my R580 badge, which, and just still a bit of scrape marks on the front and pushing the make the grill, so hopefully we can get that sorted. But it's still fit to drive, there's no, nothing at VORs at the moment. Yeah, it's basically assess, get out, have a word with them, chat, if everybody's fine, but if, if there's somebody injured, phone the ambulance. End of phone ambulance, you know, get them taken care of before you start thinking, oh, insurance, who's so and so, and you know, I'd much rather have people surviving than, you know, and if everything's all on that front, then you fall down to who are you, who are you, who's the driver, if, if it's being civil, you do it civilly, and if it's not, get the police involved, potentially. But the police mopped up anyway, so they didn't really do too much on the insurance front. All you do is to get the information, like the name, the insurance company, if they can provide it, get the registration, the make of the vehicle, what type of vehicle, what colour it is, get photos of everything as best you can, and as safely as you can as well. So it, it, I saw it there with the other chap when he was taking photos. He wasn't over you paying attention to the live lane half the time. And the policeman had to remind him now and again, Oi, watch out for the live lane. You know, which I can see why they're focused on Muscata Square. I couldn't get it because I didn't want to go out and put myself in full on danger just for a photograph. At the end of the day, it's not worth it. I got, as best I could, you could see the bulk of the damage. You know, as a the other thing I said you have to deal with is shock. There'll be shock with yourself. You know, I had shock. You know, you don't expect it till it happens. And a lot of it's just because it's come out of the blue. You, you know, certainly in my 
my case, I didn't even know they were there. At first, there's disbelief going, what have I hit? There's nothing there. Obviously, I was breaking, because I was like, I know I hit something, but I was like, then I saw it swerve around and thought, oh, bloody hell, it was a car. Yeah, oh well, it is what it is. So, yeah, so I've done the printout because I got here at Chivley Services, which was the nearest services up the way. After the time, I asked the police officer if I can wipe down his information. I should have done a printout and gotten to do his thing there, but never mind. I've got his information. I've got the reference numbers to the event as well, so... Yeah, a lot of it's just getting photos, assessing all the vehicles fit to move. That's the other one to um and all about. And if not, think recovery, obviously notify your company, keep the company informed. So when everything's done, if your vehicle's still fit to drive, let them know that you've got all the information, got photos, I'm leaving scene, I'm fine, everybody's fine. You know, I'll speak to you in the morning or, you know, Whatever your company tells you what to do, they might send you somewhere or, you know, or have to phone up on the right route in tomorrow to assess what needs to be done because the vehicle's fit to go. You know, there's no reason why it can't crack on. So that was interesting. Yeah, I never, so I've never been referalised as such before, that I recall anyway. Not on the road anyway. Yeah, so... Yes, I've got a souvenir. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm bit, I think the biggest thing I'm miffed about now is losing the R580 badge. Urgh, didn't really realise that and say I did see where it was, but I didn't fully clock. Because I was more concerned about the radiators at the time. Because it had pushed in a little bit the grilling. So I was wanting to make sure it hadn't damaged the actual physical radiator or any of them. But I say, accidents can happen, no matter, you know, how good you think you are or not you are. And, you know, I'm not claiming to be the world's best driver at the same time, but accidents do happen. And you do not know if it will be you. You could do everything correct. And this is what I've been really ripping through my head, but making sure I did do everything correct. I did check the mirrors, I did check my blind spots as best you can. And I'm going, could I've done it better? Could I... And you get all these second thoughts going, did I? Did I? And you start thinking, did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? When actually you did, but you, you know. It's probably because the brain's still working at a million miles an hour. And it's like questioning yourself going. And you start believing the falsities and going, did I? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. So yes, I thought I'd just do a quick video just to be a sort of a reference to this happening. You know, you'll probably see this a week or so after, give or take. Because the ball would have got rolling on the insurance, I'll probably know more by then. I, I suppose it's not embarrassment, it's just shock. You know. Initially I was like, oh, how did I miss him? And I was like going, what the hell, there must have been sat in that blind spot. I was looking at where the marks are on the truck and l combining looking at the impact points on the car. Because I said, I forced, effectively the car got forced around onto my front of the truck. But luckily it wasn't absolutely high speed at all, because we literally had got out the roadworks just at the speed change as well, after that junction. You know, which uh, I could beat myself up all day. You know, another worry in my head is, will I have to pay the access? Because that's our company policy. But it's mainly if it's your fault, you'll pay that. So I assume probably not realistically. But aside from that, you know, I'm not really too concerned about it. But you know. If you can save some money, you save some money. But the most important thing, I'm fine, they're fine. 
truck's really fine, to be honest. It's a beast. The car was more messed up than me. <laughs> so I shouldn't be laughing about it, but... Point nerves. But, yeah. Stuff happens. You know, it happens when you least expect it as well. I'll see. You know, if you can predict you have an accident... Wow. You know, I'm in the wrong job. <laughs> so, yeah, so... We need to get up at 6.30, we'll head out tomorrow. The other irritating thing about it, I was shouldn't even been over here. <laughs> That's the other thing was being beaten up. Going, that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't over here. I could have gone straight to the customer <laughs> instead. Never mind. That's not the company's fault either. It's, they did know that there was a hoo-ha at the other company that rejected me out because... Obviously, it's my first time on site, and because of health and safety, they needed a guy who worked there to show me how to do it. Which, he was away on family reasons today, so he went back until Monday. So, yeah. And the other routine thing is I've been forced to park up in the services, paying 30-odd quid. Because legally, I have to park up. This is the first safe spot. So according to law, I have to park here, but legally I have to pay. Uh huh? It's not the fault of the staff in there. I did steam off a little bit in front, going, I know it's not your fault, but it is kind of irritating. But it is what it is, you know. And that's another argument for another day about services. But I said, if you've been involved in any accidents as a heavy goods driver, comment down below. I mean, this is not probably a major, major, it's just basically a bump, effectively. Yes, it could have been worse, it was a lot faster, you know, or I turned in harder. You know, if I suddenly went fully, <laughs> I'm going back into lane one mode, then hit them, yeah, it might have been a lot worse. But I think they were just incredibly lucky where I think I think the first impact was towards the rear of the car on the pass, rear passenger door I think it was around there so they were literally just sat in that bit of blind spot just there because there is still blind spots well not necessarily blind spots but the spots that are hard to see by the curvature mirrors and no matter how well your curvature mirrors cover that area, it's always at the extremities where that could happen. So, so I can see how I've missed them. And not blaming the colour of the car, but in a way, yes, they were in the silver car. Which also, combined with it being dark, low colour with a bit of light reflecting up, looks like silver-ish. And, you know, if you don't expect them to be there as well, you know, you have totally no idea they were there or around there. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, accidents can happen. And at least had some civil, you know, if you've ever seen this who did, did get involved with the accident, you know, this isn't a full criticism of yourselves. You were very civil. You know, they were probably the most... If I had an accident, they're the ones who would want to meet. That sort of type of people on your face. I wasn't in their face, and I said they congratulated me because I think they were expecting me to be the big, angry truck driver coming down. Arr, you hit my truck! <laughs> you know... And in some ways, I could have been like that, but I wouldn't have been like that even if I wasn't suffering from shock myself at the time. I was a bit shaken. Not to the same extent as the car driver, and I could see why. Seeing a truck coming up at you, you know, you would be ring. <laughs> yeah. I'm lucky I was empty as well. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so things can happen you do not know what tomorrow would bring you know at least 
positives is no one's been hurt. It could have been worse. Truck's still roadworthy. Botnet's all been informed of text off all the information of log done a print out to apologize for being over my time put the police officer's information on there as well i did authorize it with a police officer i should have done a print out actually with him there but i was just wanting to get out want to get to sleep or rest even yeah so i'm sorry for being a bit on in this video but uh it's just sort of a video to sort of highlight the dangers of being a truck driver. Slightly what to do in an accident situation. And just so you get a sort of one-on-one -on -one reading of after an accident. I know it's not fresh, it's not like other YouTubers that they've got the footage and they're getting on, on in front of the person they hit, you know, wanting to create more youtube <laughs> You things to show off. No, I'm not like that. You know what? I, I suppose I do things far too properly. But I'm not going to over dramatize the situation. There's no point in doing that. You know. And in some ways, this is just a log to, to show you know, this happened. You know, if you had some interest in how in real life accents get resolved and that's probably the most civil way that happened on there as I said I was going into it expecting to be getting abuse or sorts thrown at me and I think they probably as I said they, I think they thought the same as well I thought oh no here comes the truck driver probably you know as I said the chap congratulated me at the end saying you know, thank you very much for being a civil you know, I'm a polite truck driver, you know. I said, I wasn't going to have a big discussion because I'm on the side of the motorway. I want to get things done and get out of there as soon as we can safely do so. So, yeah. Actually, that might have... Actually, it's a master the insurance company will have the information. I should have probably got their address written down, but uh, never mind. We've got contact phone numbers. I'll text the boss that as well, but I've got him down. He's got a picture of the written out thing anyway. So he's probably got the other party's phone number if needs be. So, yeah, that's me. Just get as much information as you can when you're on the scene. It is hard because I do, even though I had a rough lay in my head, that was exactly what the boss said. But I still ask the boss, Is there anything that you want? Any bit of information? And he obviously went through the natural, you know, name, insurance company, whatever you can get off them. You know, get the police officer's contact detail, you know, his number and all that. And obviously as much information about the car you can get, insurance if you can get it. You know. Take some photographs, you know, and, and just try and remain polite. That's the other bit of advice I'll throw out there. Just be polite. Don't, no matter how much you are certain it's either your fault or their fault, that leaves me on another thing. Don't admit fault. Seriously, don't. I even said to them that I'm not admitting who's at fault here. I did sort of highlight, like, look, you know, if you didn't undertake me, this may have not happened. But they didn't deny it at the same time. But as I said, it's down to the insurance companies and the company or company to sort it out. At the end of the day, I've logged all the information. I suppose it's that sort of period now that you're sort of left. You know. And as a truck driver in this situation, you're by yourself, generally. No matter how good your dispatch is, you're by yourself. You know. You can ask for help, like I did, saying, look, you know, what information are you after precisely, you know, just to make sure keep the boss happy or not happy, but, you know, informed of what he needs. But otherwise than that, it's, you know, yes, I had police there, or what a policeman, and thank you very much to the police force as well for, for it as well. He, he was civil, but, you know, not, you know, as helpful as you may have thought of, they 
Oh, I was expecting to having to do a witness statement thing with him and all sorts, but no. You know, it's a case of, you know, after it's happened, right now, I'm just parked up, popped in, and as long as I'm maybe phoning up somebody you know or family, it is an awkward thing as a truck driver to deal with, because it's not like you can go and chat with somebody else or aside from a stranger, you know, that's probably the best you can do. But as a truck driver, you're sort of out by your rim, in this, especially as a tramper. You know, you're kind of left hanging. And yes, there's no way to sort that out, but it's just the thing just to realise as well, and it's something I'm coming to realise now, like, oh. I say, it hasn't put me off from trucking, far from it. You know, I still love my job, still... I'm probably a bit miffed with the truck's damage as well, especially with taking a truck fest this year. But I say, you don't know these things are going to happen, and it won't put a truck truck fest this. You know, even if they didn't fix everything, it'll just make it look as good as possible, and, you know, it'll be it. Hopefully it gets sorted by then. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, but it's not pleasant when anything gets damaged either. So yeah, I'll leave it as that, I wasn't going to go on and on. I said, I've been on and on for 26 minutes already. So I would like to say thank you very much for watching this. I'm not being loud because, you know, people try to sleep next door. So, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. I said, if you have any comments, you know, anything like that, down below as usual. If you like my content or interested in seeing more content, Please uh, subscribe and also consider hitting the bell icon. And to all those who have subbed, thank you very much. And also commented, you know, as usual, thank you very much. I'll better clock off now and go to bed. Thank you much for watching. Over and out.